Good morning, everyone. So, welcome to this first post-quantum cryptography pre-conference of the PKI Consortium. And first of all, I think it's great to, to see so many people here in person um, in the largest tech campus of Canada. And also, really welcome to all the people that have registered online for this conference. We have over a th almost a thousand registrants uh, that are following this stream online. So that must be that post-quantum is actually a really active topic, a point of interest that we're all looking towards. What is happening? How is this impacting or PKI or cryptographic applications or day-to-day -day business? And I hope that today we can help you and have a discussion and participation of everyone in the room, but also remotely, on helping everyone and together forward on the transition to a post-quantum world. So, before we're going to do that, first, I'm Paul van Brouwershaven. I'm the chair of the PKI Consortium. I'm also the uh, director of technology, compl uh, technology compliance at Entrust. Um, but this event today would not have been possible by these sponsors. And I would really thank them for their contribution. So, please give your applause for these sponsors. So if you would consider sponsoring the PKI Consortium, we would be really welcome. Because the PKI Consortium was actually created in 2013 as the CA Security Council. We were incorporated in 2017. And then in 2021, we officially renamed to the PKI Consortium to have a broader scope and more impact to the industry. Today, we have more than 70 members with different backgrounds, and we're honored to keep welcoming new members. We have no membership fees, and that's again, that's why we're so grateful of our sponsors that are completely voluntarily providing us with funds to run this operation and a conference like this. So we're a non-profit organization registered in Utah, and so we have a diverse membership base where we started as certificate authorities coming together to improve the ecosystem security. Yeah? We now have hardware vendors. We have government members. Yeah? We have software vendors that do PKI operations. Um, we have consultants and auditors, supervisory bodies of the EIDAS framework in Europe. And we're collaborating with standards bodies such as Etsy. We have multiple working groups where our members can participate on specific topics through private mailing lists or public discussions. And about those public discussions, if you're watching this, this conference on the stream, there is a button, participate. Uh, join the discussion. Click there, you get into a forum, and you can ask questions, and you can upvote questions from others. And we would really uh, love to see your questions so that later today in our panel discussions we can help to answer those questions or maybe have a debate about that. And just really short, yesterday we had a dinner with all the speakers that we see on stage today. And it was so great to see that we had these lovely, dis lively discussions during the dinner and the conference wasn't even started. So I was thinking, actually, we should have recorded that dinner because it would have been great here for during the break or during the day, actually. So we have an, a vision of trusted digital assets and communication for everyone and everything. And basically, that means we don't want to exclude anything. If it has to do with public key cryptography, that is what we do at the PQI Consortium. And there are multiple infrastructures for that. So we want to advance trust in PKI, but also the security of the internet in general. And we do that by engaging, engaging with you, 
and with, with other people with standards boards. So what is it that we're working on? Well, one of the items that we've been doing for, for I think, over a year now is the list of trust lists. So if you go to pkic.org slash LTL, you end up on our list of trust lists. And um, we have, this is all open source. So all our work is published on GitHub, and that's where you can add contributions or suggest modifications. We're trying to get a picture, a better picture, of what models of PKI are there in the world besides the, for example, the web PKI that is very well known and broadly scoped, but it goes far beyond that. We have private PKIs, we have shared PKIs on, on the dedicated purposes, or maybe for specific regions or governments. So the list of trust lists is trying to get an overview globally from, okay, what are the different governance models? What are the different um, uh, um, uh, structures that, that are used here and which members might be in there? Um, and actually, maybe in the future, this could become very handy in a post-quantum world. Which list is accepting which algorithms and why? Remote key attestation is a really important item, yeah? How can you prove that a key was actually generated, managed, and protected in a hardware cryptographic module so that it can securely be used and relied on? And we're calling all vendors of hardware or software that is implementing any form of, post, of, of remote key attestation to participate in this work. It's a really important work to get more awareness about the importance and the adoption of, of remote key attestation while we work towards standardization of the implementation of remote key attestation. And this is the current list or part of the list that, that we have. And you can see actually there is still a lot of room for improvement also in the implementation of remote key attestation. 